So some of the uh, advancements that we've seen <coughs> on the DTS table system, especially important for patient comfort. Again, remember that was one of the one of the key factors. So um, just the the simple addition of an elevation and a depression to the lift of the table that allows us to set it up for the position of the patient's going to be most comfortable for getting them on a table. We know that patient transfer can be very, very difficult for some people, and if we exacerbate their condition before we get them on the, on the, uh, on the treatment table, then that can make it a little bit more difficult in terms of what we're trying to accomplish. So simply just allowing us to uh, uh, transfer the patients more adequately, it's easier for us as the, as the clinicians, it's also going to be easier for the patients. Uh, similarly, when we're putting them in a, in a prone position, that we can put it up to the level that's going to be most comfortable for the patient to uh, get into. Uh, as you can see, we've got various adjustments on the, on the table. Again, a simple addition to this leg device piece here is allowing to uh, change the angle when we're doing cervical traction, as we'll, so we'll show momentarily, uh, that we can adjust the angle of the cervical traction when we're in the supine position for lumbar traction it allows us to elevate this position so we can get them into a more hip flexed position or a less hip flexed position. Uh, as you can see here, we've got two different size bolsters. One is for, uh, there'll be a greater hip flexed, greater knee flexed position. And this one's going to be for a, a smaller or lower hip flexed and knee flexed position. And so when we use the higher bolsters because of the greater hip flex position, it's going to be more important at being able to elevate this, this table. So this piece right here, again, making it not only more comfortable, and we'll see that there's various crossover effects, one for the comfort of the patient, but two, also the improvement in our treatment protocols. This also allows us to flex the hip position uh, to a greater angle which we'll talk about later when we look at the angle of treatment. That could be more important if we decide that we needed to treat an upper lumbar spine condition. The new hydraulic system makes it much more easier to um, uh, release and allow for movement of the, of the device as well. Um, this is a pelvic tilt position, so we use this when we're doing uh, supine uh, traction in the in the lumbar spine. Um, this allows us to manipulate the pelvis. So if we were trying to get a, a greater degree of posterior pelvic flexion, posterior pelvic tilt, it allows us to accomplish that, separating those posterior structures. Which again, if that was our if that was our goal in a particular treatment protocol, we can do that without manipulating the hip position uh, to a great extent. So uh, that's a great opportunity to create changes in the pelvic position without actually manipulating um, the angle in the iliofemoral joint uh, because sometimes patients are a little bit more uncomfortable. So as you can see, it just pivots and we can gauge the degree of, of how much it pivots and the handle can also get out of the way so we don't run into that when we're, when we're walking up and down the table. So again, it's another opportunity to get pelvic positioning uh, without necessarily manipulating the hip position, and we can also combine those two to increase the amount of pelvic tilt as well as the amount of, of iliofemoral position if it were part of our, our particular treatment protocol. Um, the locking system, so I'd mentioned earlier when we look at the lower coefficient of friction, in the tables and how they move more smoothly, but also when we look at its ability to be spring-loaded and move back and forth, which is very, very important for the intermittent traction. So there's a locking component to it, which is a safety mechanism. We can lock it when we're transferring patients, when we're getting them on the table, as well as when we're getting them off the table. So we would unlock it during the treatment to allow the table to slide, so that way that they're attached to that lower, that lower portion of the table, they're secured at the upper portion of the table, and the table will actually separate when we provide traction to the patient. So it simply moves with much greater ease than pulling patients across the, across the table. So again, there are two components when we look at that. One is it's more comfortable for the patient. We don't have to use as higher intensity to separate the patient to actually get the amount of traction 
with that lower coefficient of friction, moving patients with the table and not on the table or against the resistance of the table means that we can use less resistance and that translates into being more comfortable for the patient. Um, and again, from the clinical component to that, using lower intensities then it allows us to manipulate the parameters a little bit more to get the desired effect. So having that very, very low friction table with that spring-loaded position, it dramatically improved the comfort of the patient, but also our ability to provide for intermittent traction, which is what we really didn't get uh, previously. And the axilla pieces, so this was a, another addition to this specific table that allowed us to secure the patients, and we'll show this when we have a, a patient on here, that allows us to secure the patients uh, without necessarily using the thoracic restraints or in combination with the thoracic restraints. The more that they are secure in that thoracic position, then again, the less sliding that we'll see, and that's gonna be more important at using the lower intensities and actually accomplishing um, the treatment outcomes that, that we would like to accomplish. There are several opportunities to adjust the, th the thoracic restraints using the belting system as well as the axillary pieces. And so again, greater opportunity to make it more comfortable for the patient to be secured to the table. In the upper torso, in the, in the thoracic region, there's a split now to this particular table. and it allows us to adjust the arms and the, and the thorax separately. This is especially important when we're gonna put people in a prone position, so that way we can have their arms and their thorax or their torso in two different planes. That makes it much more comfortable for the patient. Um, most of you know, of course, when we look at the anatomical position of the shoulder joint, it's slightly off center from that frontal plane to the body anyway, so this is gonna be much more comfortable uh, for the patient. When we have this split in the, in the thoracic piece, it gives us the opportunity to use this as a, as a greater treatment option and using this as a treatment table, not only for the traction, but also for some of our other manual therapies. So we can put people into a position that's more comfortable, but we can also put people into a position that provides us an opportunity to do some of our other therapeutic interventions while they're actually on this, on this table. So this split piece, again, two functions. One is it's more important because it makes, makes the, the patient more comfortable, but it also provides clinical application to uh, give us the opportunity to treat patients while they're on the table and giving the, the table more of an opportunity to become more than just a traction table, but it's also a treatment table for some of our other therapeutic interventions. We can move them both together. Again, for that, for that prone position. The headpiece has also been something that's, that's been improved in the, in the prone position. Uh, the face piece, the nose piece can come out. And again, it just makes it more comfortable for breathability. There's actually an open screen in here that allows for free flow of air to move in and out. This piece here is the ability to actually put people into neck extension. So again, if you're using this table for um, treatment, then it gives you the opportunity to put patients into variable positions, especially when it comes to uh, relative osseous and, and soft tissue uh, manipulation. Um, the other component that we have here is the, is the grab bar. So historically, when we put people in the prone position for traction, uh, we, used to, we used to put people in the, in the grab bar position. So it's retractable, so it can actually get out of the way. So depending on whether or not you're using prone position often, you can always move it out of the way so it doesn't get into anyone, anyone's uh, uh, way. The, <coughs> the grab bar itself is adjustable. So you can put it into a position that's going to be more, uh, more comfortable for the, for the patient. It's also adjustable in this position. So we can bring it all the way up. And again, we can, we can change its position relative to the, the, length, of the, uh, the length of the arms. Um, so again, looking at some of the other adjustments that we can do with the table, we talked a little bit about um, some of the manual therapies. And so we can actually set this up. As you can see, I've already elevated the, elevated the table. <clears throat> we can set this up to do some thoracic and 
and cervical manipulation as well by adjusting the, the position of the head piece and the arm piece. Um, this is just the cushion that we were using before. We can take the, the nose piece out here. We have a tilt mechanism on the, on the face piece. Go ahead and come up here. Back. So similar to what we can use with some of our some of our therapy chairs and performing some of our thoracic ma manipulative procedures, performing some of our thoracic manipulative procedures, as well as uh, cervical work and and head work. So again, it's another opportunity to set up and utilize the table in these in these different positions, and um, allow us to um, get a little bit more usefulness from the from the table itself. Um, so when we look at all of these components, I mean, the, the key factor is that we've, we've made it more comfortable for the patients. And I always say the first and foremost, one of the things that we need to do is we need to make the patients more comfortable. And when we look at the success of today's treatments, especially decompression and, and traction and where we are at today, that is because the patients are, are more comfortable. Again, we've been using, tr using traction for many, many years, but it just, it was not comfortable. So the more opportunity that we have to adjust the patient to make them more comfortable and to allow them to totally relax. Again, when someone is in pain, they tend to have spasm, they tend to have guarding. And if we cannot overcome that, it doesn't allow us to actually produce the, the treatment outcomes that we're trying to accomplish. So when we look at all the things that we've just discussed and pointed out on the table when it comes to the patient uh, positioning, uh, the key factor in why a lot of those things were introduced into the new tables and in, in this DTS system in particular is it allows for improvement in, in patient comfort. When we look at the history of traction and even the success when trying to create that negative intradiscal pressure uh, or that negative pressure that we get in the intervertebral discs, it's best accomplished by total relaxation. And if we don't get that, then we're not actually able to separate the vertebral structures. So all of these components together improve the ability to make patients, make patients more comfortable, which is something that we always struggled with before, from the foot position all the way down to simply just not having to reach too far for a grab bar and simply being able to uh, uh, get onto that grab bar and actually hold on to it to the axillary pieces. Um, but then when we look at the belting system, and that was one of the things that we really lacked uh, prior to especially this, this latest technology in the, in the belting system is again, the ability to one, make patients more comfortable. But one of the things that makes them more comfortable is that they need to feel secure. If they don't feel secure in the system, then they tend not to relax. And especially when you're, when you're on one of these new devices for the first time, first time you're treated with manual therapy, it can be uh, um, overwhelming to the patients, especially if they're, if they're already in a guarding situation, they're already in, in pain. So the addition of all these components to um, the table system, we, we do see clinical efficacy, we see clinical improvement from the outcomes and what we're trying to accomplish as clinicians. And, and again, a big piece of that actually comes from patient position and making patients more comfortable um, by simply just manipulating all these parameters and all these combinations to make patients more comfortable.